Hey, who needs real horses anyway? Can a real horse do this? Probably not. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 guest stars on Bob's Burgers. It's love at first sight, now it's our wedding night. I confess, I stole your tree and these lights, and I did it by myself. I should know, I managed a chef cat from 1993 to 1998. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable celebrity guest spots on the hilarious animated show. However, we are excluding recurring characters, so you won't find actors like Bill Hader on this list. Look at me, burger in one hand, beer in the other, living life. This is how you go to jail. Which of these guest stars surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Josh Gad as Damon. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, can I help you up? Gad plays Damon, a boy Tina falls in love with the moment she sees him. When she finds out he's auditioning to be the newest member of Boys For Now, she channels her male alter ego, Dino, and tracks him down. Damon! Yeah? Hi! Um, I don't know if you'll recognize me. We uh, met earlier today. Oh, we did. Sure. No, I don't. I don't remember you. Even though things don't exactly go as planned, we're treated to some pretty fun musical numbers throughout the course of this episode. Rap battle. What are you doing in space? It ain't your place. Hands off my girl, I'll hit your face. I didn't come to fight, I came to dance, cause out in space we don't need pants. Yeah, that's right. Honestly, we're just happy any time we get to hear Josh Gad. He is a voice acting pro after all, with hilarious roles like Olaf in the Frozen films and Birdie the narrator in Central Park under his belt. Hi, how are you? Don't answer. I should do the talking. Lots of stuff going on, so allow me and my stringy little friend here to fill you in. It's no surprise the actor perfectly delivers as Damon in this season 9 premiere. Number 9. John Oliver as Ian Amberson it can sometimes get a little difficult to separate John Oliver from his apt social and political commentary on his late night show Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. As well as the kind of idiocy that forced local news to have to produce pieces like No, You Can't Get Coronavirus by Eating Chinese Food. But his talents don't stop there. He's also had roles in The Lion King remake, Community, and many more. Lucky for us, Bob's Burgers is part of that impressive list. In There's No Business Like Mr. Business Business, Oliver voices the character of pet agent Ian Amberson, who insists he can turn Gail's cat Mr. Business into the next feline sensation. All right, so I've placed some treats here, here, and here. Uh, that will lure him to hit the mark. So go ahead and let Mr. Business out of his carrier and let's see how we do. The relationship between him and the family sours pretty fast, but this guest spot is certainly quite the treat. You might even say quite the cat treat. That cat is a loose cannon. You saw what he did. Not anymore, Ian. Number eight, Wanda Sykes as the Sofa Queen. I'm the Sofa Queen, and I'm here to banish your ugly furniture. Wanda Sykes has given us plenty to laugh about with her appearance in the Ice Age movies, Monster in Law, and Bad Moms, to name merely a selection. Was that three? That, that was like one, and then... 1A. As the sofa queen on Bob's Burgers, the actress gives us another shining example of just what a queen she truly is. It's you! Your majesty, it's really you! And it's really you, lady crying in the middle of a store. Come on, make some room. <laughs> While no new couch could replace the one the Belcher family grew up with, their visit to her furniture depot gives Linda the opportunity to meet the sofa queen. And she even gets a little advice from her. It goes without saying that shopping for couches would be a lot more entertaining if every store had its own Wanda Sykes. Linda, that's what we call in the industry a nasty couch. Number seven, Amy Schumer as a toy store customer. Hi. Clyde, let me in. It's an emergency. Oh, boy. I need that Tanuki baby I called about. In the season 7 premiere, Fluies, the family accidentally destroys Louise's favorite toy, her Coochie Kopi nightlight. Naturally, she's furious. However, she also happens to have a pretty bad flu, which is probably to blame for her weird and enlightening Wizard of Oz type fever dream. While she's asleep, her family tries fixing the nightlight with Teddy, but to no avail. Luckily though, our favorite handyman knows a toy guy named Clyde. While he and Bob are at the store, Amy Schumer's character appears, and she's as desperate for Clyde's help as Bob and Teddy are. Come on, I have an apartment full of people and 
I told them that I have a Tanuki baby, and they were like, no, you don't. And I was like, yes, I do. And they said, prove it. And I said, I have to go to the bathroom, and here I am. I have a Tanuki mama. Their paths only briefly cross, but it's a funny cameo from the woman who brought us hits like Trainwreck and I Feel Pretty. All right, give me your phone. My phone. Give me your phone. I'm going to give you my number. Are you still talking to me? Don't chicken out now, son. Here, come on. Out? Number six, Adam Driver as Art the Artist. Hey, Marshmallow, who's your friend? This is Art. He's an artist. What do Marriage Story, the Star Wars franchise, House of Gucci, and this episode of Bob's Burgers all have in common? Clearly a man with nothing to hide. The answer is the one and only Adam Driver. The actor lends his voice to Art the Artist for the animated show's season 8 Christmas special. His character steals Linda's little Christmas tree, which she decorated with her most cherished ornaments. Needless to say, the theft sends her and the kids into a frenzy. However, this isn't the story of a cold-hearted Grinch. For the last time, lady, we didn't steal your ornaments. Well, someone did! I did. <gasps> Art was responsible for decorating an underground rave, but he didn't have enough money for the decorations, so he borrowed them from the neighborhood. And I just... I had a dream of making it look beautiful in here to bring people a little bit of light. Luckily, the Christmas spirit of forgiveness was one thing he didn't steal. Number 5. Amy Sedaris as Samantha Mort? Oh, I, I recognize you from the picture on your website! When the Belchers find mold in their restaurant, they're forced to leave. They decide to stay at Mort's mortuary, giving us a little insight into his world. He's hoping to land a date with a mortician. Enter Samantha, played by Amy Sedaris. When Mort finally gathers up the courage to ask her out, Bob and Linda agree to tag along for a double date. While Linda spends the night trying to reconnect with her husband, Mort and Samantha totally hit it off. They share the same Mortifying humor and really seem to understand each other. So, what's the weirdest thing you've ever found in a human body? Amy Sedaris is incredibly talented, so having her portray Samantha is killer. We just wish the voice of Bojack Horseman's Princess Carolyn had stuck around a little longer. Starting now, you are a hard, heartless career gal. Go to work, be awesome at it, and don't waste time on foolish flights of fancy. Number 4. Fred Armisen as Tommy Gironda Hey, hello. Tommy Gironda, pleasure to meet you. Hi, uh, what, you're the new Hugo? Well, there's only one Hugo. Yeah, well, I'm here, so let's get into it. When Hugo, the health inspector, finds himself enthralled with the nudist lifestyle, Tommy, voiced by Fred Armisen, replaces him. Tommy seems like a reasonable and friendly enough guy at first. Soon, he starts using the restaurant as a venue to play his music, which wouldn't be the worst thing if he was any good. And the one thing all the ladies know is I'm good at having. With their health inspection reports dependent on him, it's hard to ask him to take his act elsewhere. When Bob finally does, Tommy shows his true colors and shuts the restaurant down. Armisen's resume is packed with hilarious roles on shows like Schmigadoon, Portlandia, Big Mouth, and, of course, Saturday Night Live. All right, well, if you're gonna be part of the family, uh, you've got to know the rules. And his guest spot as Tommy was no exception. Number 3. Tiffany Haddish as Patricia Looks like you've got another bread perv. No, I... wait, wait, what's a bread perv? You know, one of those guys who's into bread. I mean, really into bread. Everything Tiffany Haddish touches turns to funny. Girls Trip, Tuca and Birdie, Night School, and Like a Boss are just a few examples of her comedic prowess. Oh! Oh! Um, it's getting hotter. It's getting hotter. So, of course, the actress brought the busy sandwich shop owner, Patricia, to life flawlessly. The character is a smart, driven, and talented businesswoman. It's no wonder Haddish was tapped to play the part. When Bob accidentally ends up at her establishment on what's supposed to be his day off, he asks to work with her. Patricia, you're slammed. Let me help you. What? No, that's crazy. It's crazy not to let me help you. Please. Okay, fine. Yes, g give me an apron. I'm ready to work. She's swamped with customers, and he can't sit still. In the end, Bob learns a valuable lesson about family and even encourages Patricia to take a chance on love. And having someone in your corner, well, that's what makes doing all of this worth it. Oh, well, now you're gonna make me cry, Bob. Number two, Paul Rudd as Jericho. Uh... 
Hey, what's up, Tina? Why the long face? Some people have imaginary friends, but Tina Belcher has an imaginary horse named Jericho. That's already a strong start, but it gets better. The beloved Paul Rudd is the voice behind him. In the episode The Horse Rider-er, Tina heads to horse camp, where she'll finally get to ride a real horse. Jericho is sent into hysterics after Tina tells him this means that she likely won't need to imagine him anymore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's happening here? Oh, I just assume that when I get home, you'll be gone. What? Why would you assume that? Because you're an imaginary horse and I'm about to ride a real horse. Luckily, it's not the end. Tina's relationship with her real horse is nowhere near as magical as she'd imagined, and she realizes that no horse compares to Jericho, real or imaginary. It's certainly fitting because Paul Rudd is truly one of a kind. From Ant-Man to I Love You Man to Friends, this ageless actor never disappoints. I always wanted to play piano professionally, and I figured if I don't do this now, I never will. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. John Hamm as the Talking Toilet Please sit to create profile. Ah! Please log in with name now. Gene? Hello, Gene. Please sit to create profile. When Gene finds a talking toilet, voiced by the great John Hamm, it's friendship at first sight. While his time with his new BFF is short-lived, it's clear their time spent together is meaningful. I... I love you. Please repeat command. I love you. At first glance, a toilet is not a character you'd expect to remember in the long run. Yet John Hamm really wipes the floor with his performance and makes this an unforgettable episode. Not only does he nail all the bathroom humor, he also manages to humanize an inanimate object, all while putting the voices of Siri and Alexa to shame. Say poo poo platter. Poo poo platter. Say nuclear wiener. Nuclear wiener. Say hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. If anyone can make a toilet feel sophisticated, it's definitely the man who brought Don Draper to life. No, everybody else's tobacco is poisonous. Lucky Strikes is toasted. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.